Good morning. I'm Mr. Coleman. I'm your outreach worker here at Sanford High School, and I am super excited to introduce our speaker today, Luca Kynard. Luca has come here all the way from High Point, North Carolina, to share his story of addiction and recovery from vaping. I want to thank Luca and his mom, Kelly, for uh, coming all the way up to Sanford, Maine, to talk to our, our students, not only you, but to all the adults in the room as well. I think we're all going to learn something. Um, I also want to thank uh, our community partner for making this happen, uh, Partners for a Healthier Community through Southern Maine Healthcare and Strategies for a Stronger Sanford. With that, I introduce you to Luca Kiner. Good morning. Is it afternoon or is it morning right now? I don't really know, but good whatever time it is. My name is Luca. I'm 16 and I'm from High Point, North Carolina. And I came to talk to you guys today about my addiction with how I went through vaping and how I got over it. So maybe to encourage you guys to make some healthier lifestyle choices so we can all become happy, healthy, and safe people. But before that, I really want to connect with you guys. You know, I know what it's like to be a teenager. I know what it's like to be in high school. I'm still a junior in high school. I'm 16. I know that we have a lot that goes on. For our freshmen in the room, you know, you guys have just entered high school. It's still kind of new territory. It was a huge transition. And for our seniors, they're about to exit high school, and they're about to go into adulthood, go into life, the workforce, college, or maybe even service. So many different things you guys are going through. And then there's the every single day challenge of, you know, actually going to school. They're with their friends, our teachers, peers, having classwork, homework. Some of us do sports, or some of us are in clubs. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in our life, and I want to say that I see your stress, I see your hard work, and say that you guys are doing a great job. But just like anybody else and any human, we all have stuff we got to work on. So when did I first start using substances? I was 14. I was in the eighth grade. I was in the Boy Scouts. Are there any Boy Scouts in the room? Any Boy Scouts? No? Maybe just a few? What rank are you, man? What rank are you? We blow, man. Cub Scout. That's fair. But Boy Scouts, this is a really, really great thing. You know, there's so many different opportunities with it. You can learn some knots, learn some leadership qualities, get better things for college and jobs, and so many different things. But you're also in the woods for a week with some guys living with them. You probably want to be on their good side. You know, these guys were doing shoe in the back when I was 14, and I was very innocent. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was poop that they were putting in their lips, uh, but I did it anyways. I absolutely hated it. It was disgusting. I threw up from it. Didn't taste good. Didn't look good. But I continued to do it. And, you know, it was not for the enjoyment because there really wasn't any. You know, the only enjoyment I got from it was that these guys I had known since I was 8 years old at 14 were finally telling me, you know, you're not going to have to go back to your tent in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night in the rain. It felt great that I was able to be around these people. So now I'm using chewing tobacco and cigarettes and cigars and cigarillos and everything and anything tobacco throughout the end of my 8th grade and then throughout the summer before my freshman year. And then I'm a freshman. And guys, as a freshman, that's the next four years of your life in, in high school or, or in college to have a clean slate. You know, for me in middle school, I was bullied a lot. In elementary, I was bullied a lot. So I didn't really have a lot of friends. I'm also an only child. So all I ever wanted was that friendship and that companionship. And I was finally having the opportunity to have a new identity. Plus, the teachers couldn't get on me for being a troublemaker. They didn't know it yet. I loved it. You know, the Friday night football games were really cool in my area. I think we all know what Friday night football games are. Raise the hands. Yeah, we all know. So it's a really good place for sports, friends, food, whatever you got to do down there. But for me, it was dangerous in that I was, a, I was introduced to vaping. You know, the bleachers were so cutthroat. The seniors had to have the front row seats, and then it was the juniors, sophomores, freshmen. See, my high school, our mascot was the bison. So literally what the seniors would do is they would herd us freshmen back, and they'd use megaphones and microphones, and they'd yell at you, cuss at you, and that's in front of your family, your friends your friends' families, the teachers, the teachers' families, the whole community. Uh, for me, it was in front of cheerleaders, and I don't know about you guys. As a guy, I don't want to be embarrassed in front of a cheerleader. But I really wanted those front row seats. You know, the most enthusiasm were there, the most fun. But they told me all you have to do to get these front row seats, front row seats is Jewel. How many of you guys know what Jewel is? Raise your hands. Everybody raise their hands. Don't play dumb. We all know what it is. There's this huge uh, idea or thinking that vaping is not dangerous or, or yada, yada, yada. Well, the way that they presented it to me was just that. 
You know, they told me there's no nicotine. They told me it's better than smoking. They told me if I want to quit smoking, I could probably do it. And I was like, I just got smoking grits outside my window by my mom in eighth grade. I should probably stop. They also told me it was cheaper. Uh, what they really told me was that it was vegetable oil. I remember being 14, vaping, thinking, I'm vaping vegetable oil. Everybody go out and do it. And I'm 16. I don't vape. I know vaping vegetable oil is not a thing. But even if it was, why would you want to vape vegetable oil? What do you get from that? You know, you get absolutely nothing. But I really did believe it. It was a very silly belief I had. But for the first month of high school, guys, it was just a way to fit in. It was just a social thing. At 14 years old, I had never been asked to go to the movies with a group of people or go to the mall or go out to eat or go to their house or have a fire, a barbecue, a party. And I finally had that. At first time, at 14, I had a social group, and man, I absolutely loved it. But along with that came an addiction, and I didn't even see it yet. Hey, guys, in the front, in this row, I'm right in front of you, and, you can, and you know, I can see you very clearly when you're moving around like this. Come on, guys. So, I gained an addiction with it. What? I gained an addiction with it. So now I'm starting to use all the time. Instead of it just going through maybe a pod a week or, or every so often, now I'm going through four pods every single day consistently for months. You know, one jewel pod is equivalent to 20 cigarettes worth of nicotine, and if you're going through four a day, that's 80 cigarettes worth of nicotine a day. Man, your, Bobby's prob your body is probably going to go through it a little bit. And I didn't even see it that I was out of control. It was expensive, too. Four pods a day is not the cheapest. It was about $150 a week at the time. You know, how many of you guys, if you do not have a job, have a way to get $150 a week? Maybe, if you, don't have a, if you don't have a job. You have a way to get $150 a week and you don't have a job. Nope. So, man, I was broke. I didn't have a job. I had no way to get money. So how did I afford it? Well, I sold my clothes. I sold my shoes, my personal belongings, my family's personal belongings, my family's jewelry. And honestly, if y'all were ever so gracious and kind enough just to let me stay the night at your house, I'd probably steal your stuff and go sell it. And it wasn't because I, I didn't know that being a thief was bad because everybody knows being a thief is bad. I didn't think I was a thief. I just thought I was doing what I got to do to get what I need, and you should respect that. I mean, obviously, people didn't respect it. I'm stealing their stuff and hustling them. People hated me. I'm constantly getting in fights. People can't trust me. I hide. I lie. I cheat. I steal. People don't like me very much. But also, guys, everything I had going good for me, I got rid of. How many of you guys get good grades? How many of you guys play sports? How many of you guys are in clubs, Boy Scouts, or extracurricular? A lot of us in the room. You know, I used to be a straight-A student. I became a failing student that nearly dropped out of high school. I used to play two sports. That is so much better, those lights. Sorry, it was kind of bothering me, but thank you guys. Um, I used to play two sports. I dropped out of both of those. I dropped out of Boy Scouts. And these were all things I had been working on since I was a young age. You know, these things had taken a lot of time and effort to get towards for everybody to look at me and say, man, I'm so proud of you. You're going to have such a great, bright future. You're going to have such a success. You're going to get into college so easily. To now I'm a high school dropout nearly. He doesn't play sports and isn't in Boy Scouts, and I'm the first person to be known in my class, the first to pass away, the first to go to jail, the first to go missing, the first to drop out, and I'm a sophomore. Everything's the exact same, but it's actually a lot worse now. See, my highest grade my first semester of sophomore year was a 58. You guys know what it's like to have your trophy grade be a 58? It doesn't feel very good. My lowest grade was a 7. You know, it wasn't a 17, it wasn't a 70, it was just a zero and a seven. Uh, I promise y'all, I'm not stupid, I just really did not like French class. But, you know, it's so much easier to get an A or B than it is to get a seven, so really don't try, I wouldn't recommend it. But obviously I was out of control and I still didn't see it. I thought I was just being a teenager. I thought I was, oh, okay, whatever. Until September of 2018 when I had a six-minute grand mal seizure from vaping. You know, seizures are super scary, and how many of us know what a seizure is have heard of it? You guys are all very aware. So seizures are so scary because there are so many different things that can happen to you. You know, you can die. You have permanent brain damage, permanent nerve damage. You can have more seizures afterwards, or you can be A-OK. -okay. Thankfully, I was A-OK. -okay. But guys, that could have been completely different. I could have died. Any potential success, any potential opportunities I could have ever had, everything could have been gone just like that. I didn't even appreciate my own life to say, I have a second chance right now. I'm a pretty well-known guy in my area, especially at the time. You know, my city's pretty big. It has about 100,000 people in it. And people would ask me in grocery stores or on the sidewalk or in school, out of school, social media, really wherever, what's going on with your seizure? How many more have you had? Are you okay? What are the doctors saying? 
These people genuinely cared about me. They didn't really even know me. They just knew my name and heard what happened, and they cared about me. And I told them to shut up and leave me alone. It's not because I didn't love them or appreciate them. It's because I simply hated myself. So why would I ever want the attention on the person I hate the most? I didn't want that attention. And y'all might be wondering, well, why did you hate yourself so much? You know, everybody's got to learn to love themselves and appreciate. That's true. But once again, when you used to be a straight-A student that played two sports and was in Boy Scouts, to now almost being a high school dropout and you recognize all those horrible things, you probably hate yourself a lot too. So anyways, it's two months later. It's October of 2018. My mom and my dad, they text me and say, Luca, we got to talk. I think we can all agree if somebody says, yo, we got to talk. Probably some deep doo-doo. So I get down there, and I'm not excited. It's a Friday night. I get down there. I get on the couch. I lay down. I'm sprawled out like this. I'm like, this is a mighty fine couch. But and they go, Luca, how do you feel about being here? I'm sorry. That's not what they said. They actually said, sorry, that's the next part of the speech. They said, Luca, pack your bags. 3.30 in the morning, you're going to go to rehab in California, so get ready. I laughed at him. <laughs> I said, what's that, bro? That's not going to happen. It happened. You know, I went to rehab 3.30 in the morning uh, the next day. Not a fun experience, guys. I was so scared, and I was such a destructive human. Not only destroying my grades or, is there a light following me? Oh, cool. Destroying my relationships. But I was physically destructive. You remember how I told you guys I felt like I was going to blow up or I felt like I had to relieve my stress? Yeah, I would blow up. I would kick down doors, tables, chairs, windows, computers, glasses, dishes, keyboards, everything and anything I could break to get in my way. It didn't matter if it was a human. It didn't matter if it was my school. It didn't matter if it was my house. I was breaking stuff because what? Somebody called me out on my bad behavior, called me out on my bluff, and I couldn't sit in my own skin and admit it. It was never acceptable. But anyways, that night I broke some stuff. I punched in my mom's car door so much she couldn't open it anymore. And guys, when it's 3.30 in the morning and you're trying to go to rehab and you can't even get in the car, you're a little bit upset, especially when it's cold and rainy outside. Anyways, I get to rehab and I'm on this seven-hour flight in the airport to get there. How many of you guys have been on an airplane? How many of you guys think airplanes are comfortable? Y'all are some liars. I hate airplanes. I'm a big believer if you're anywhere above five feet tall, it's just not meant for you. But I was there for seven hours, and there was a cute little dog sitting in front of me. How many of you guys like dogs? We all do. They're pretty nice. But this dog peed on my foot. <laughs> Cherry on top, right? This dog just peed on my foot. We discovered the person who owned the dog snuck the dog on. So we have a dog smuggler that's asleep. We have a smuggled dog running around peeing on people's feet. We have an upset mother, and we have a drug addict with a wet foot. I call that a pickle. So, you know, I get off the plane. I'm in rehab now, and it is not a warm welcome. The way that you're welcomed in rehab is a strip search. How many of you guys know what a strip search is? How many of you guys have been through a strip search? That's a better question. So, for a strip search, what they do is, you know, they pat you down. And this is for my fellows in the room. I want you guys to understand how uncomfortable this was. So, if you're a guy, you know, imagine another guy, six foot three, big beard, used to play rugby and football. He's in a big flannel, and you're in a dark laundry room. He's patting you down, making sure you don't got anything in your pockets, your clothes. But then he takes your clothes off my, and everything but your underwear. Uh, you get to just keep your underwear. If you're a lady, you get to keep a bra. But you don't have socks on. Uh, but then they make you, you know, squat down, do jumping jacks. And that's not for stuff to fall out of your clothes. You don't got any on. That's for stuff to fall out of you. It's weird. You know what it's like, fellas, to be in your underwear next to a full-grown male trying to talk to you? Man, it's weird. He was like, how do you feel about being here? And I told him, it's just eight days. It's going to actually suck. You know, I'm going to miss Halloween. I'm not going to be able to talk to anybody. My friends are coming down from college. I won't see them for their break. I'll get through it, though. That guy's name was John. And I don't know if John ever heard me. Because John only said our program is designed to be 35 to 45 days. Or you can be here for 90. And if you don't want to be here for 90 days, we can send you somewhere else for six months to 18 months. Man, my life changed so fast. My jaw dropped. I was like, I was like, so what? I was like, what's going on? That's before he told me I couldn't have my phone. Now, that was the real kicker. But guys, everything changed so fast for me, and I had to learn a lot in there. You know, in rehab, there is a lot of stuff you do not have that we all take for granted. You don't have your loved ones. That's not a thing. You don't have your good morning. You don't have your good night. Your I love you. Your hug. Your high five. Your handshake. Somebody holding the door for you. You don't have any of that. How many of you guys like your freedom to get water or use the bathroom when you want? Everybody, please raise your hand. It is an amazing freedom. 
In rehab, you don't have that. It's just like school and that you have to ask, uh, but you're not in school, so there shouldn't be a reason to ask because there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to. You're constantly being watched. You have no privacy. The only time you're ever going to be alone in there is the bathroom, but they're still listening to you, trying to make sure you're not trying to hurt yourself or escape. So guys, all those things in there, we all take for granted. And communication with your loved ones or friends, you don't have it. I got one phone call a day for five minutes of phone call for the first three weeks. By the fourth week, I got 10 minutes, and by the fifth, I got 15. And I was with my mom or dad. That wasn't who I wanted to talk to. They just sent me to rehab. Guys, there are so many things we take for granted. But you know, the hardest part of rehab wasn't the fact that the food wasn't the greatest. It wasn't the fact I couldn't do whatever I wanted in there. It wasn't the fact that I didn't have communication with people or entertainment. The hardest part was having to sit in my own skin. Because as humans, we want to be strong and we want to be dominant. We want to be on top and want to be successful. But in rehab, you're weak. You are. You're vulnerable. You're open. You're insecure. And you're scared. And that's okay. That's a part of growing. That's a part of being human. But it's very uncomfortable when you're doing that every single day, 24-7, for 39 days. Guys, the last thing I want for you guys is to be in a treatment facility, or really any facility, whether it's for an eating disorder, whether it's for bad behavior, or whether it's for substance abuse, because there is no worse pain in this world than being told, you're not safe to yourself and others, and we're going to have to watch you. And you don't know when you're going to get home. We don't know. It's just up to you to change. It hurts. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably like, why did they bring this guy from North Carolina all the way up to Maine uh, to come preach to us about vaping? It's not that big of a deal. It is. How many of you guys have seen vaping on your campus? Raise your hands. How many of you guys, when you go into the bathroom, see people doing it in the bathroom? That's the issue. If you can't go through a 45-minute or an hour-long or 30-minute class without having to go away from it and go to the bathroom and hit something, you're addicted. If you can't be in a friend group or can't be in a club or a sports team without going to the locker room or going out to the bathroom or going outside of the building to, to do it, you're addicted. And y'all say it's not an issue. Y'all say y'all in control. Imagine this. I'm a recovering addict. I'm trying not to vape anymore I, or I'm trying not to drink or something. And you're in the bathroom doing it. And I'm just going in there to do my business. I'm just going in there just to you know, get away from class because I want that relief. And now I'm an addict and I'm seeing it right in front of me. You're my temptation. And if I relapse, that's on you. Guys, we got to be more considerate of our peers. Because there are some people in here, I promise y'all, there are some people in here that are trying to stop something. And whether you know it, y'all are each other's biggest influences. It's not our adults in our lives. It's not. It's not those people on social media. It's not. It's each other. We're with each other all the time. I see some people kind of looking back and forth at each other like, man, you might be calling each other out. Good. I like that. If you're calling each other out, because what y'all need to do is encourage each other to do better. Don't shame them. Don't make fun of them. Just say, hey, we got to all do better. Because I don't know if y'all know this or not, but we're the future. <laughs> we are, guys. We're in charge of our freedom, our money, our health. And those three things, I do not want that being touched by a drug dealer or by a drug addict. That's not what I want. I don't think that's what you guys want either. Please, guys, we got to treat ourselves better. I know vaping isn't really looked at as an addiction, but as I said earlier... Look where it got me, and look where it's getting y'all. And maybe you're not getting consequences. Maybe you're not getting hurt. You will. Look what happened to me. My friends also were vaping. You know, Eventually, you don't get that same relief. You don't get that buzz. You don't get the same thing from it anymore. You want more. You want alcohol. You want weed. You want pills. You want coke. You want other things. You know my friends are now that I started doing all that stuff? They're dead. I'm talking almost every single one of them, all eight of my friends have passed away related to drugs and alcohol. And it all started off with vaping. I'm not just talking maybe a few friends, like one or two, I'm talking eight. They've not just passed away from overdose, they've passed away from being too drunk or high to operate a vehicle. They've passed away from suicide because their addiction, they couldn't handle it. Or they've passed away from murder because somebody owed each other money and they're getting too aggressive and involving guns. Guys, I'm telling you, it doesn't take being an addict just to pass away from substance abuse. It takes just one time and the people you're around. Did my friends die from nicotine? No. Are people dying from nicotine and vaping? Yes. There is 60 plus deaths. People dying from dab pens, people dying from actual vapes and nicotine. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's just not good. We got to treat ourselves better, guys. Also, I went to the middle school, a uh, middle school this morning. Did the middle school this morning feed into this high school? 
Yeah, this is a, no, that middle school that I went to this morning, does it feed into this high school? So that's your younger siblings. And I asked them, I was like, man, how many of you guys see your older siblings uh, vaping or, or drinking or smoking weed or doing drugs? A lot of their hands went up. And I'd be willing to put money that some of those people that they said are y'all. What are y'all doing? I talked to a, a sixth grader the day who, who smokes weed, and he's di- done it since he was nine years old. And he's got an older sibling. And, you know, I, I've talked to other kids there that have been saying, like, my parents in addiction, or I have family members in addiction. And I'd be willing to bet some of y'all are the same ones that they're influencing. Do better for yourself. And if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your little siblings. I know that they're annoying. I know that they're pesky. But, hey, you love them. And they look up to you a lot more than they'll ever admit. You don't want to be the reason they go down a bad road. And also, if you're a senior on campus, you guys are the big dogs on campus. Y'all are top dogs. These freshmen, whether they want to admit it or not, they look up to you. You know that they've, We all do. If we're younger students, we look up to you guys in some way. Because y'all run a lot. Y'all probably run the clubs, the sports, the popularity, the, all, all the things y'all really run. Why don't y'all run something positive? Especially if you're about to go into college and about to go out into life, y'all are at risk. Y'all got a lot of freedom. There's not going to be teachers like this telling you and getting on your back about it. It's all your choices. I don't know about you guys, but you guys all look very successful and look like y'all all got a lot of potential. Don't cut it short just because you're making bad choices. I know it's enjoyable. I know everybody does it. I know it's kind of weird hearing it from a 16-year-old or an adult, but we're not doing it to get down on y'all. We're not. We're doing it because we love you. We really want the best for you guys. All right, so I'm going to share four more things, and these are the last four. You guys ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the, four, the first one out of the four is you are not alone. I think just as a society, but especially in teenagers, we just think that we don't have a voice because we're afraid to go share it because we're afraid somebody's going to hurt us because of what we said. You're not alone. You know, you have somebody right here that just brought me all the way from North Carolina to come talk to y'all. He cares. He will talk with y'all. Y'all have counselors. Y'all have so many different people in your lives. You have school people, you know, teachers, administrators, your peers, your family. If you go to church, people in church, your teammates, your coaches, people in clubs, y'all are not alone. Second thing I want you guys to do, take things day by day. How many of us get super stressed out thinking about the future? Every single one of you seniors better raise your hand. Man, the future is a scary place because we don't know what goes on in it. We are out of control. So why are y'all worrying about it? It's very healthy to accumulate goals or to set up a plan for your future. But don't get stressed out because you don't know what's going on with it yet. You don't know. So just take things day by day, one thing at a time. Third thing I want you guys to do, just learn to accept them. You don't have to like them. How many of you guys like waking up super early in the morning? That's a good select, maybe four or five. Good, because I hate it, man. I like waking up at 12 or 2 in the afternoon. I'm a late sleeper, and I'm a very late at night going to sleep. But anyways, you got to do it. You know, you got to get to school. You got to get to work. So there's going to be times in your life, you know, where you're sitting here and you're, you're balled up and you're shaking and you're itching at your skin and you're biting your nails and you're just super tense and your veins are popping out your forehead. But you're not going to get up and go, man, I love that. <laughs> Let's do that again. It's not going to happen, guys. But there's going to be a lot of those times in your life. This is going to sound morbid, but it's the honest truth. There are going to be people in your life that pass away. There are going to be pets that pass away. There are going to be relationships and friendships that just don't work out. There's going to be defeat. There's going to be punishment. But what are you going to do when that happens? Are you going to sit there and feel sorry for yourself and ask, why am I here? Why could this be me? Why isn't it somebody else? Why right now of all times? Or just know it's not happening? It's not that big of a deal? Then you're going to be stuck in denial. And you're going to be walking in a circle. You walk in a circle enough, you get dizzy. If you get dizzy enough, you fall over. But as soon as you guys start to say, hey, this is what I've got, and maybe not be a lot, but this is what I've got going on, let me make the absolute best of it. You can get out of that, and you can move on. You can grow. I promise y'all, nobody's going to force you to like what you go through. Nobody will. Nobody will force you to uh, agree with it or understand it. Just accept it. It's going to make you guys a lot better people and move on. This is my fourth thing for you guys. You guys like challenges? Uh, that was like very like, yes, and then, mm. Y'all like challenges? Yes, sir. Can I get it louder? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this fourth thing is a challenge. The challenge for you guys is find healthier alternatives to substances. I don't care if it's weed, 
I don't care if it's nicotine. I don't care if it's alcohol. I don't care if it's drugs. Find a healthier alternative. And I don't care what your reason for using it may be, whether it's to fuel your curiosity, to relieve your stress, for the enjoyment, or for a social thing. Find a healthier alternative. So what are your healthier alternatives? How many of you guys like sports? How many of you guys like art? How many of you guys like video games? How many of you guys like music? How many of you guys like reading? A lot less hands. How many of you guys like outdoor stuff like fishing, camping, hiking, swimming, biking, catching bugs, or whatever you do outside? <laughs> hey, you never know. I know some people that got them nets out there. They're really out there for them bugs. And we're in Maine. You know, we're in Maine. Y'all catch lobsters. Those are basically bugs. But anyways, anyways, guys, what I'm saying is I am so incredibly happy to see that there are people in this room my age or younger or older that like things to do. There's things in here that you guys have such great passions for and hobbies, and that makes me so happy to see because it's going to make y'all healthier and happier people. And the more you do stuff, the more it's going to get you away from bad habits like addiction. Also, try something new. This world is way too big just to be limited to liking bugs and, or playing sports. Right? So try new things. I know trying something new can be very scary. So if y'all don't mind, I'm going to share an example of when I tried something new that I was kind of scared to do. It's a little bit funny. So I'll share it anyways. I was 15 years old. I'm a guy. I went to the mall with a group of girls. I felt good. I mean, I thought it was going to be some clothes. Going to get them some clothes, you know, get a nice little outfit, get a girlfriend. Uh-uh. I got my eyebrows done. <laughs> yep. I'll tell you what, man, I was so afraid because let's be honest. We see a 15-year-old guy. I can grow a beard, by the way. If I have a big beard and I'm in the mall getting my eyebrows done, we're probably going to look at the dude and be like, dude, you're a little bit off. What's going on? You know, I was so afraid to get made fun of and what people would think of me. I was afraid of the cost. I was afraid of what I was going to look like, how the experience was, as crazy as it may sound. It was an enjoyable experience. And I'm not telling y'all to go get your eyebrows done because, quite frankly, that's a little bit rude. Um, but what I am saying is no, no matter how abnormal, no matter how weird or uncomfortable it may be that you think you're trying something new, doesn't mean you can't do it. Don't be afraid to try something new because of what somebody else might think. Who cares? Be yourself. It sounds so cliche, but you guys are all one of a kind. As soon as you start to worry about what somebody else likes or worrying about somebody else, what's special about you? You're just like everybody else. Just be yourself. And don't be afraid to try something new because you don't know what goes on. You'll never like anything. And you'll be sad and depressed, and you'll probably be catching bugs. But that's all the time I have for y'all guys. So are we good to do Q&A? Q&A, man. So thank you guys for letting me talk. So now I want to hear from you guys. So this is your opportunity to talk. Um, for some Q&A. So if you have a question, raise your hand. I'll answer it. But I'm going to ask two things. Um, my first one, keep it school appropriate. Second one, just as you guys respected me, somebody else is about to talk in front of their freshman. Guys, this group again. I know you guys got a lot of enthusiasm. You guys are really nice guys. Let's cut it down on talking. Okay, so when somebody has a question, he'll bring the mic over to you. But what I want you guys to do is just respect your peers. It takes a lot of bravery, all right? And also, I'm not trying to be rude. Can we get the light just a little bit down? Just a little bit? Just my eyes. I want to be able to see the crowd if that's okay. Okay. All right, so if you have a question, raise your hand. You can pick them out. All right. So when you went into the thing... Um, what was, what was the thing you wanted to do? The rehab? Um, what did it do to you? You got to run it back, man. Yeah, that's all right. So when I went to rehab, they did a lot in there. You know, there's one-on-one -on -one therapy, one-on-one -on -one psychiatrist. Uh, there is school. You actually have to do schoolwork. Um, you have to write essays a lot for your therapist. And then you also have three groups, um, groups on healthier communication, groups on sobriety, and then groups on your, like, self-awareness. Then you go to NA meetings and AA meetings, which is Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous for narcotic abusers and alcoholics. Um, so you do a lot of work on yourself, essentially. But there were some, some rewards. Like one time we got to go to the beach. One time we got to watch a movie. One time we went to go go-karting. And we quickly got kicked out. But um, they definitely did a lot to you in there. Definitely did a lot. And I want to say, man, that takes a lot of bravery. It takes a lot of courage and confidence to say that in front of all these people, and I really want to appreciate it and say thank you for sharing that because you really didn't have to, and I really appreciate it, man. I hope the best for you. You're doing a great job.
Good question. Thank you for sharing uh, your story, and <laughs> I hate you. You're really cute. You know, hey, thank you. Again, I appreciate the confidence and the boldness. That was slick, but I got a girlfriend. All right. Hey, don't make fun of her. Hey, that was good, though. She did that in front of everybody, man. She was bold. I like that. Dang. Some of y'all are probably like, man, I wish I did that. What's this Snapchat? What's this TikTok? Yeah. All right. We're going to move on. We're going to go to another question. Right there, man. So when you went into the rehab, did you get, like, any nicotine withdrawals or anything or like that's a great question so did I get any nicotine withdrawals when I was going uh, into rehab absolutely so for two weeks uh, consistently I had soreness in all my muscles and my joints because I was really um, really tense I was very shaky I had headaches um, I didn't have an appetite but when I did have an appetite I was nauseous and I really could not sleep and I was very irritated all the time and that wasn't all at once, you know, it was off and on. They would trade each other out, but it lasted for about two weeks. So, yeah, I definitely did have withdrawal. Good question. I can't see, so you're going to poop. At this point in your recovery, are you able to hang out with friends that are still using, or do you have to completely remove yourself from those situations? So at this point in my recovery, can I still have the ability to hang out with people who use or have I cut them off? I can, um, but sometimes I choose not to. It's just kind of off and on where I am as a person. I will definitely say when I first got back, it was hard because I didn't know who wasn't using. I think that's a really big struggle as teenagers, but not everybody uses, guys. It's actually more people that don't use than do, um, but it's definitely hard sometimes. So it just kind of depends where I'm at. Personally, I will admit right now, I'm staying clear of people who are used because I'm kind of doing a lot of stress right now. Um, but it just depends. You just have to be aware of what you're going through. But my best advice for anybody is if you know somebody's doing it and they just don't respect you um, enough to not do it around you, probably shouldn't be around them. Good question, though. Uh, do you have TikTok, though? Um, so if you could like go back in time and like see yourself from like kindergarten, what would you say to yourself like <laughs> like revolving around like what you've been through? Whew, getting a workout. Man, he was he was hauling, man. He was out there. Thank you. Um Kindergarten, well, I think the first thing I would tell myself in kindergarten is get rid of that haircut. Um, but if I could go back in time, if I could change anything, I wouldn't change a single thing, um, simply because your mistakes make you who are now. I like myself a lot right now. But I will fully admit, if there is anything I could go back on and tell myself, it's okay. You know, you don't have to do this to fit in. I think that was the biggest thing, is I always just wanted somebody to put their shoulder or their hand on my shoulder and tell me, hey, it's going to be okay. Because uh, I was constantly feeling like everything was just going to go wrong. Um, I think also if I could go back and change anything, it was definitely the way I treated people. I was just so volatile and just so mean. Uh, I've lost a lot of friends, not just to death, but in terms of my relationships not working out because of the way I treated people. So I think I would really go back and, and fix a lot of, um, mend a lot of relationships is what I would do. Great question though. But yeah, I gotta get rid of that bowl cut I had in, in kindergarten. Hey, what do you wanna do? We got a, a time for a few. How cool do I close? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> do people from your past judge you for like going to rehab? <laughs> Good question. 
That was a great question. So the question was, do people from my past judge me from going to rehab? Yes. My area, unfortunately, is not very accepting of addiction. I think here it really is because of what I've heard and all the work that they have for you guys and resources. But my area, you know, I was told that I was going to be the first to go to you know, jail or go missing, and I did go missing. Nobody knew. So when I got back, I was like, oh, okay, like, whatever. But people were so un misunderstanding and just didn't care, really. Um, they told me to kill myself. They sent me death threats. They called me names. If I was on the sidewalk or if I was out in a grocery store, they'd splash alcohol on me. They'd throw stuff in my face. They'd put it in my backpack. People were mean. People were real mean. Uh, but there was also a lot of support. And if you're going through addiction, I don't want that to discourage you guys, but I will fully admit to y'all, when people are mean to you because of your addiction and you're trying to stop, they're not doing it because they don't care about you. They're just doing it because they don't understand, and they probably won't ever until they stop. So just do it for you guys. Don't do it for them. But yeah, that was a good question. People didn't understand. Right there in the front, man. I can see you. What's your question, dog? You can just say it. It's okay. You want me to come back to you? All right. If you got it, just raise your hand again. I got you, man. Good question. Anybody from this side of the room? You guys have been so quiet. What grade are y'all in? Freshman? Are y'all just doing it because the seniors are here? Does anybody have any question? Nobody? Y'all liking this? Thumbs up? Just a big nod? Okay, awesome. Appreciate you guys. So what did people start to notice me as when I got back from rehab? Definitely, there's definitely a lot of people said I looked happier. Um, definitely a lot of people said I looked better. Like, I grew a bunch. I grew two inches and gained 10 pounds when I was in rehab. Um, my face kind of got more full. It wasn't as bony. It didn't have ribs anymore. So people definitely saw a change in me. Um, but I think that a lot of people also thought I was a hypocrite because not only was I doing it, I was selling it to them, and now I'm the same guy not doing it. So a lot of people were just like, didn't understand my, the process, thinking that my parents or me. Um, but people definitely said I looked a lot better. Good question, man. Thank you. So how did I integrate back in just like the typical life when I got out? So I definitely did have to do a lot of changes. Uh, when I got back, it wasn't just like you're thrown into life. You know, I went to therapy. I went to counseling at school and out of school. I went to family counseling. Uh, counseling. So there definitely was like just a lot of therapies, just a lot of um, rules I had. I had a whole sheet of paper uh, where I had to just be enforced. Like I couldn't have my phone certain times. I couldn't go out with certain people or, or just different things. So there was definitely a lot to work on. Good question. Anybody from the middle part of the room? In the back, if you want to run the mic back. <laughs> um, are you almost completely recovered? So I am sober. I've been sober for 16 months. But am I fully recovered? No. Unfortunately, one of those things is that once you're an addict, you're always an addict. So recovery is going to be throughout my whole life. Um, but recovery is definitely a lot better than it was a year ago or, or even 16 months ago. So I've definitely recovered quite a bit, but I got some more work to do. Good question. I can't see you, man, but I'll take your word for it. You can just yell. Did they give us nicotine patches? No, they did not. So my rehab was very big on not giving stuff to people for withdrawal. Um, it didn't matter what drug you're on, alcohol, coke, didn't matter. They weren't going to give you anything for it, um, which is definitely very harsh considered other rehabs, but it definitely helped me out. But no, I did not get nicotine patches. Good question. Anybody from this side of the room? Anybody? Right there. How would you say you're doing now? How would I say I'm doing now? You know, I'm doing a lot better. I think I'm doing great. I've got, I'm doing Algebra 2 right now. Um, not a fan of that at all. Um, I'm in Boy Scouts. I'm about to go hiking this Sunday. I'm about to go back home tomorrow. Uh, well, tonight, actually. So I'm, I'm enjoying life quite a bit, getting to travel the country. But yeah, life's a lot better. It's amazing. 
Good question. Yeah. Run! <laughs> run, run, back to game. Where's the question? Um, do you still have people? Because the light. Um, do you still have people who try to push you to vape and things like that? Yes, I do. I definitely a lot of people try to pressure me and definitely a lot of people try to get me to do it. Which, you know what? Just hope that hate leaves their heart. Because, man, trying to take somebody down is just kind of evil, I think. Um, so I really just wish that would leave them. Um, that's why I left them. So, no, people just don't do that because I just don't get around it. Good question. Right there. Where else have I gotten to tell my story? All over South Carolina and North Carolina. Um, some in Virginia, Montana, Minnesota, now Maine, California, New York, D.C., um, and also, I've been on a lot of national news and live television. So, global, baby. Good question. So, I think we have time, time for one more question. Uh, so, Ms. Laterno will get the last question. I know Luca's mom is here in the audience. And I don't know if mom wants to go up on stage, too. But um, if you either are willing to share sort of the differences in your relationships. I know that later on today, we're having a parent pizza party um, where parents are coming in to meet Luca's mom and get some information on their teens and what they can look out for in their own home. But I'm curious if you'd be willing to come up and maybe talk a little bit about the change in your relationship or how things have been. Let's clap it up for mom! Thank you. I'm absolutely happy to share. Um, it took a long time to rebuild trust because <laughs> our trust was completely destroyed. So it's been a, you know, a process. Things have definitely changed. I mean, I do trust that he will not use substances, but I know that the temptation will always be there. But we've had to learn to retrust him. That's it. And it takes a lot of hard work to do that, to rebuild trust. It's easy to lose, but very hard to regain. Yo, better be nice to her. <laughs> I think that's all the time that we have for today. As y'all heard earlier, parent, pizza, party, triple P's. I encourage y'all to come out with your parents if you guys like to. I understand if you don't, but there's pizza and there's also me. They have class. Never mind, don't come. Stay in school. Thank you. Appreciate it. Goodbye. So Luca will be up here if you'd like to come say hi to him before you guys leave. Uh, he'd be also glad to answer any questions you weren't publicly wanted to ask. <laughs>